Okay, so we are about to unbox box 21. So after this one, there'll be five more to go. But this is one of the big ones. It's a five cubic feet box. And it's pretty filled. So first thing I have in here is a little treasure chest. So I have, oh well, look at that. What a surprise. I have a deck of Uno in here. And then I have some money. This is kind of where I tend to put the board game money. Every time I take in my empties and I take that money and put it in here, and then that's um, that's board game money. So my little treasure chest that actually holds treasures. And then I have Sea of Clouds. Sea of Cloud is kind of an interesting push your luck game a little bit. So you're pirates of the sky. So you have different ships, but the ships fly. And um, you kind of go around the board and at some point you're going to be battling the person to either side of you. So you want to have some pirate cards that's going to give you the battle strength. But then you're also collecting different resources. So you'll be collecting rum, you'll be collecting different artifacts. And then um, and the way that you select these cards, what's interesting is um, <clears throat> you'll have these different piles and you'll look at the first one and you can pick what's in that pile. If you don't want what's there, you put it back down and you add a card to it, then you go look at the next one. And then if you, now it could be like, oh, that first one was better, but now you've passed on that one. You can't, now you have the option. Do you take this one or do you go look at the next one? So if you go look at the next one, you put these one back, you add a card to it, and then go to the last one. And at some point, when there's a certain amount of cards in there, then it gets a gold token added to each one um, until you decide which one you want. And then if you don't like any of the piles, then you draw one of the face-down cards. Um, but each pile becomes better and better as you go. So it's an interesting one. I bought this one as a gift for my brother. Um, and then my brother, my sister, and I ended up playing it. Then both me and my sister and it buying the game as well. So that's Sea of Clouds. And then I also have Ship Shape in here. Um, when we did our top nine uh, pirate game for the podcast, uh, the board game specialist, I had selected or I kind of give options of what we could do top nines about. And I did like, oh, well, let's do top nine pirate themes. <laughs> when it came to do it, I didn't have top nine I didn't have nine pirate games I had played, so I ended up purchasing a few, uh, purchasing a few and this one was one of them. Um, and it's a really simple, neat game. So basically, you're a pirate and you have a cargo hold and you're trying to put as much good stuff in this cargo. Um, and then you add layers to it. So, and each one of these have like different cutouts, different things that show. So when you put one and you can kind of pivot it whichever way you want, trying to cover some of the bad stuff. Um, <clears throat> is it rats that are worth negative points? So you want to try to cover the rats, but kind of have the good treasures. And then when you score, depending on what you score, some stuff you'll score for points of what it is. Some stuff is whoever has the most will score or whoever has the least will score. And then some is like, if you have the most, then you got, um, like you got taken and then they count, count, or confiscated your your goods so then the second most would score the most and so on so it's an interesting one it's really simple very luck driven like there's not tons and tons of skills associated with it because you're bidding on how deep you want to go with this so you'll have a card be like okay well, I don't want to be the first so I'm not going to put my top card I'll put like one so because the top one is not really all what I want to do and then if you match with other people then you don't actually get to draw anything and it's an interesting one and I've enjoyed this one so ship shape and then <clears throat> I have monument wonders of antiquity this is an older game and it does have that you know, blah, older game look, but it's so good. Um, the way that it works is you're kind of building sets of your cards with the different um, wonders of the world, basically. And, but you can go around collecting cards from everybody and you can't take their card if it's the only one they have. But you take their top one on the pile, so you kind of collect on that, that's going to move these discs here which moves the value of those goods so you want to have like cards of that good to score and then try at the same time build up that good so it scores higher 
Um, it's a really neat game. I really enjoyed every time I've played this one. I've probably played it a handful of times. Um, but there's, it's an interesting balance of what you're trying to do with this one. So, monuments. And then I have, hmm, let us see what else we have in here. Okay. So I have Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization. I bought this one secondhand. I've never played this one. I played my brother, which is a story, a new story of civilization. So I don't know how it compares the, the second version to this one. But I like Civilization game. Um, I enjoyed the new story of civilization. It was a beast to learn, I gotta say. Um, so I've got this one. Just got a, 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 a I like Civilization game. I get them off often but I like I've got a lot of them but I don't they don't necessarily hit the table very much and this one just seems like it's either it's shifted or there's just a lot of stuff in there and honestly there's a, a lot of stuff in there I uh, will organize that box some other time so through the ages a store of civilization and then I have Disney villainous um this is one that, I mean, at, at one point when it was coming out, everybody was talking about how great this game was. Um, came across it, then decided to uh, purchase my own copy. And it's really interesting. Everybody plays as their own villain character. And you have your deck of card, and then you're going to go through it trying to accomplish different things. And then you have the hero cards of your story that goes on the side, but then the other players are going to be playing those against you. Um, you all have a different goal of what you're trying to accomplish and whoever accomplishes their goals first is the winner. So if you notice somebody's starting to get kind of close to their goals, you're going to start trying to play more hero cards on them um, just to stop them. And then my friend 3D printed this thing because this was made out of a kind of a cheapo plastic and it looked pretty cool, but he 3D printed it for me and it looks stunning. Um, so that's Disney Villainous. And they do have a lot of different expansions of different villains you can get as well. I only got the, the base game. Like I said, I've played this one maybe three, four times. So I don't play it so much that I need all the villains. But they're out there if I decide I want them. Then I got Elder Sign. Elder Sign is a really neat game. It's one that we pull out often at Chris, uh, Christmas, at um, Halloween time. And it's a Cthulhu-based, so it's like a horror story-driven um, dice game with this one. And what's really neat about it is you can play from one up to eight players. And you'll have all these cards that go out. Each card has different requirements of what you need to roll to unlock the cards. And you have the dice, but then there's different cards that will allow you to get different dice that has like more wilds on it. Or there's different things that will allow you to mitigate the different dice. It's a fun, now it's a fun game. I really enjoy this one. Keep in mind, it is a dice game, so it's very luck driven. Um, and then they have this clock here that every round you kind of go a quarter of an hour around. And every time you hit the midnight, then... You change the card of what's happening on that turn and it can have different things happen to you. It's never good. It's always bad of some sort, but it'll just be like, okay, well now you can't use the yellow dice this until you kind of go all the way around. And you're trying to find Elder Signs before there's enough Cthulhu sign that releases. And it's not always Cthulhu. There's different monsters you'll be battling depending on which scenario you end up doing. So, Elder Sign. Then I have... Arkham Horror the card game. Um, still again Cthulhu theme. This is all card game based. This one is a one to two player game um, and it's I mean it looks really good. The way that the game uh, works it's like each card will have a symbol on it and if it has a matching symbol to another card and there are location cards then you can go from that location to that location because the matching symbols means that they're attached. Um, and you're going around trying to kind of solve what's happening, unlock different things, and then um, kind of, you know, go through the scenario. Um, this is one I enjoy quite a bit as well. It was one that I found was really, for some reason, no, the first time I played it, it was really early on in my gaming career, we'll call it. 
Um, so it took me a long time to learn how to play this game. I gotta say, Fantasy Flight has made an amazing tutorial video. It's almost like you're watching a movie. It's great. Um, but we had that going. We had the uh, rule book open. And before we kind of got comfortable enough to play the game and kind of figure out what we needed to do, it took some time. Um, but it was really worth it. It's a great game. There's a bunch of different scenarios that you can kind of add on and get new cards to do. Um, I haven't done that yet. This is just a base game, so I'll want to get more eventually. Um, just, you know, I have a lot of games, so I haven't had felt the rush to do that too quick. So Arkham Horror, the card game. Then I have Bob Ross, Art of Chill. Um, <clears throat> this is a great game. It's surprisingly good. So you'll have a different Bob Ross painting. And... Every round you'll roll the dice and depending on what the dice, what's happening. So if you roll a Bob Ross figure, you kind of move the Bob Ross along the painting and this is him doing the painting. And the goal is to get the paint that you need and the paint brushes to paint all the elements of the painting um, before Bob Ross completes the painting. Because every time you complete an element and then they're kind of on the map, they'll indicate the different elements that you can do. You know, it could be like a happy little tree or the sky or water or there's different elements that kind of are recurring. And then when you get to complete them, you get to score. And if you do it before Bob Ross has done it, then you score even more. So you kind of go on the the chill meter, I guess it's called, and then you kind of move up every time you complete something in the painting. Um, if you're the first one to complete it, you get a bonus for it too. And then you have your palette that you add paint to it. Now they all have different elements. It could be like you started to collect something and then Bob Ross finished the painting. So you go to the next painting. Now you, the colors you have don't match what you're trying to do. So you got to wipe down the palette. That's one action that you can do. Um, each card can be either paint brush or the paint color. And you would kind of collect that and then spend it the way that you need to complete the paintings. It is really neat. Um, it's a fun game. Wait, like to look at it, you wouldn't think it'd be that kind of that fun of a game, but it really is. It comes with a little easel that you put the paintings on and really cool. Then I have Thieves. Thieves is amazing. It is so good. Um, with this one here, you're, you start, well, I'll show you the board. So you kind of start in the Europe area and you're, acquiring different information on the different historical sites that you're going to be going to. So the more information that you collect, the more likely you're, or the more you can dig out from the site. So you want to get some, kind of collect some knowledge and information on the different dig sites. Then you'll go to the dig sites and then you can do a dig. And depending on how long you spend there, so the longer you spend there, the more you can pull out. Uh, the more you can dig, but then the more knowledge you have, the more you can pull out from the from the dig as well because you're kind of digging in the right area just from having acquired the proper knowledge. And then you pull from the bags and you have a bag for each dig area and then those tokens in there and then the different tokens will either have artifacts that will be worth points or sand. Most of it is going to be sand. But then what's interesting is if somebody's gone in there and pulled a bunch of artifacts out, the sand goes back in, the artifacts are already out. So it's going to be becoming more, more scarce to find stuff because that site's already been dug up and picked through a little bit. So you're less likely to find stuff just like you would in real life, right? It's very thematic. I really enjoy this game and it has a mechanism that whoever's in the back is who goes next. So when you go to a dig site it says, okay, well, if I dig for 10 weeks, you're going to have to move ahead 10 spaces for the 10 weeks, but then you get to pull out so many tokens and then anything that's an artifact you get to keep. But then you're going to be way ahead and before you the other players catch up you may not get to do something for a little while so it's like okay hey, do you really want to dig that long maybe if you dig eight weeks or six weeks you know it's kind of it's interesting decision making on that side so that's thebes then i have arkham horror um i enjoy the horror themed games i think that comes across with this box um, and this one is super, super neat. 
So you have this board that you kind of all build and connect with each other, kind of like a puzzle, like you, they fit into each other. And then you have the, the deck that you'll be drawing. And then at some point, if a haunt happens or something like that, and then it kind of goes back to the front or through the back. So it kind of changes um, like the recurring of what's going to be happening. Um, and you're going around trying to stop the cultists from you know, bringing a demon into the world. Um, it is a lot of fun. This is really good. I'll play one to six players. Um, I played it with, like I bought this game, played it with the friends, kind of called everybody over and we, we played. Now, can be a little bit longer. This is a two to three hour game. Um, and then because we were learning it as well, but you go from location to location, trying to dig out the clues to discover what's happening and um, great game, Arkham Horror. Oh, and then I have Summoner's War Master Set. I know very little about this one. Um, in February, <laughs> it snipped off the tip of my finger, and I hadn't purchased any game in the whole month of January, and then it was kind of like, hey, I'm going to make myself feel better and get myself some treats, and then I ended up buying a lot, a lot of games. This was one of them. Um, so I bought it for my friend Lyle. Uh, played hat games. I like played hats, honestly. And it's kind of interesting. Like it looks like it's a card battle game where you have this map that you're setting things to, to battle. It says the expendable card game of tactical combat. So that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, I know very little about it. I see that there's dice. There's cards that kind of move towards each other. Looks like each side has one spot. So this would be a two player game. Yeah, so it's a two-player game, 30 to 60 minutes, which is actually a pretty good time. Like, that's pretty quick. Um, hmm, the more I read about it, the more I like it. I haven't even played it yet, so hopefully I'll get to play I really seem to like one versus one battle games for some reason. Didn't know that about me, but those just tends to be games that I, that I enjoy playing. So there's that one. And then I have these little shelves that I had was using because most of the shelves are like calyx or calyx like shelves and i had my smaller games on that and then then you have like the small shelf and you got half the shelf you're not using and i'm not a big fan of so i was using this to put like games on the bottom games on top um i bought a dvd shelf here that pivots that's on both sides so i'm probably not gonna have to use these um, at least not in my game shelf, so hopefully not, but I'm sure we'll find some other use for them. Maybe just not in the game room. Um, then I have Evolution Flight. So this is an expansion for Evolution. Um, my kids really liked Evolution. So I ended up getting this one. And basically it had flight to, um, so you can have flying animals as well now. Um, I haven't played this one before, so I don't know how it works or how things change, except that you have this extra ability that you can do now. Um, yeah, so because you got the body size, the population, so it still has like the same as the regular animals, but they're just flying ones. So we'll have to give that a try and see how that works out. Um, then I have this one race to adventure i've played this one a couple of times and it's a really neat game it plays quick it plays in 30 minutes two to five players um and basically you have this map and you're going around collecting these different um you're trying to collect the different stamps for your passport and there's different things you need to do um and then you can travel in different ways by zeppelin by biplane by you can actually just walk and stuff it kind of for me kind of has a bit of like a where in the world is carmen san diego feel to it for some reason um and this one also has an expansion in it that kind of adds an underground travel as well so um it's neat it's um and then can you go around the, in each place while you collect, you can also do different things where you can refuel, you can do different things. Um, and you're trying to get all the passport um, stamps and then go back to the, I think it's New York City, where you kind of like your home 
So it's kind of a race game. It's pretty neat. Race to adventure. Oh, that's right in the name. So yeah, it is a race game. <clears throat> I also have... This is shifted somehow. Oh no. What is... Oh. It's the... Um, the box insert that's shifted. That's weird. Okay, there you go. Perfect. So this one is Broom Service. Um, it's a really neat game. This is a pick up and deliver game. So you gotta go into different locations to pick up potions and then go and deliver those potions to other areas. Um, and it has a really neat action selection system. So you'll have your action card that you'll kind of draw and then at the same time everybody reveals it at the same time and then you have to decide whether you're going to be coward or if you're going to be brave and then if you're going to be a cowardly wizard you get to do the action right away but you get to do only a portion of it now if you're going to be brave you're going to get to do the whole action do like extra stuff with it but you got to wait till the end and if anybody else reveals that same action you don't get to do the action um it is kind of like an area control game as well it was a lot of fun. Um, I've played this one a few times. Um, it's neat. I'm excited to play this again, just because it's a good game. Room service. Then I have Space Base. Um, so this, if you've played Match Coral, this is very similar to Match Coral um, in a way. Um, I would say it has a lot less of the take that that Match Coral can have, um, but it's neat. It takes like Magic Crow is a table hog, this one even more so. So everybody gets one of these boards and you got, like you got the different actions for each roll that you would roll. But then you can get, acquire some cards that are gonna replace those ones and then the cards you're replacing kind of pivots over and it gets tucked under so that it become red numbers at the top of your board. And those red numbers activate when somebody else rolls that for you and then you get to activate what's on the card. Um, it was, it was neat. It was interesting. I don't know if I like it more than Match Coral. I think Match Coral might still be up higher on my list for me. Um, but this one was a neat one that we've played a few times. Just got to get it played more as well. But then, yeah, takes up a lot of room on the table. So space, space. Then I have, oh, la la, Rising Sun. Um, this one was stunning looking. So it's a cooperative game and you're in the, um, did I say Rising Sun? This is Atlantis Rising. I don't even know. <laughs> rising Sun. I don't know what I was thinking. So Atlantis Rising. And then you are on the island of Atlantis and it's sinking. And you're trying to go around, kind of build, um, like the, um, whatever this, the portal in the middle of Atlantis to save all the people and then transport them elsewhere. So you can't save Atlantis. You're trying to save its population and its knowledge and its, um, you know, like its lifestyle, I guess. So, and each round you'll kind of be rolling and then one of the tip here is going to tip over and it's going underwater. So you kind of slowly flip this over as you go around and you're trying to Okay, it kind of paused and it started again, so that was weird. Um, you're trying to build all the segment to open that portal. So that is Atlantis Rising, not Rising Sun. Um, and then I have Shards of Infinity. This one is neat. It's a deck building game, but in this deck building games, you level up yourself. Like one of the actions you can do is kind of acquire you know, experience point basically. And then when you reach a certain number of experience point, you go up a level. But then as you increase your levels, your cards that you've been purchasing all along and that you have, kind of like, okay, well, if you're between this and this level, it does this. But if you reach this level, it does this. So the cards that you've purchased become more and more powerful as you play. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. It says it plays in 30 minutes. And I have never had that gameplay in only 30 minutes. It's always, always taken us much longer. And I don't know, I don't know why. I would think like 30 minutes per player is probably more accurate to my personal experience. Um, but it is definitely a neat game. Um, and that leveling up plays very much like Star Realms, but then with that level up ability. So very cool. 
And then I got this for Christmas from a friend of mine, Near and Far, the Amber Mine. So it's an expansion for Near and Far um, that kind of adds this mine thing. I haven't played with this expansion yet. Um, it looks really cool. Um, so I'm excited to give it a try. Um, I just I haven't played Near and Far in a little while and I really want to play it again because it's such a neat story driven game. So the Amber Mines. And then I have Railways of the World, the card game. I've played this one a few times and it's really good. Um, I really enjoy it and it's kind of a pick up and deliver train game. So you have these different, well, everybody gets a bunch of trains and you're going to be building these routes and then you'll put the station on it and then the station have certain colors. So you need to have the proper color route uh, to be able to build that and then you'll put your train on it to show which one are yours and then when you have like there's goods on each of these stations and then you can transfer like so on this it's a white uh, a yellow station that has a white route and has a red good on it so when you have when you get locomotive cars that you can add in front of you and then what for every locomotive guard cards that you have this is how far you can transport goods for um, so you would have to take that red good and you're trying to transport it to a red um, and I'm not seeing one but a red station and then you get to score that and you score for how far it's gone um, and you kind of keep track of the on the scoring uh, scoring tile it's really neat I've only ever played this one two players so far it plays uh, up to four um, but we really enjoyed it it's a great game and that's Railways of the World, the card game. Then I have Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter. I had bought this one for my kids at one point, and I am and hot as like Christmas, and then I was like, okay, is this game for little kids? Is it gonna be too boring or too easy? And we almost never won this game. It's not too easy. Now you can play at different difficulty level. Um, and you're supposed to kind of add different things to it and we had just everything was added in there so it was hard um, but it's really neat so you go around you'll roll the dice and that tells you how many space you can move um, but most of the time it's gonna trigger for a ghost to come out and then you'll kind of flip the card it tells you um, you know so the letter C so then if a ghost come out it goes to the C location so you you roll a space that like a number that has a ghost and you flip a card and you put out a ghost if you ever get three ghosts in the same location then it becomes into this red um, more evil ghost and they're different more difficult to to banish but you could go into a room with the ghost and roll the banishing dice and then if you roll a ghost symbol you get to banish ghost and you're trying to keep the ghost situation under control so you don't get too many of these big red guys and if you get a six big red guy you're out but the goal is to go around this house this mansion um, and collect the gems but you got to collect the gems in numerical order so you'll kind of get to a room and flip it over it's three okay good well we're looking for one so leave it there and then the little characters the little miniatures and they have little backpacks that you put the gem in when you've picked one up and then you got to get to the front door and dump the gem out and then go back in and find the other gems and you got to get find all the gems before the haunts uh, the haunting in the house gets on um, out of control and that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter. Great game. Then I have the Quest for El Dorado. And this one is a deck builder game that is also a race game. So you got the map that you kind of build and there's a bunch of different map combination that you can do. So you put your map together, then you're going across. And to get across the, the jungle one, you have to have machetes. And to get across the water, you need to have ores. And to get across desert or village, and then you need to have coins. Um, and it's so you're trying to build your deck, but you're trying to build your deck diverse enough that you'll be able to go through multiple trains. Um, this one has been really cool. But it is a, a nominee. So a spill this yard nominee, um, which, you know, normally means it's been a really good game. Um, but 
And it's funny, it's not in English, I can't read that, but it's a great looking game. A Reiner Kinesia game. Then I have Forgotten Waters. I heard amazing thing about this one. It's an app driven game and I heard that the stories are really good and the voices in it. So you're pirates and you're going around, then depending on the number of players, everybody has different roles they've got to do, different tasks they got to maintain. And um, you're going through the stories and then like you open up and you got your map and it's like the water map with it where everything is. It looks so neat. So neat. I am really excited to play this one. I haven't played it yet. Um, it's another played hat game and this one is up to three to seven players and I think that's why we haven't played it yet because it's easy for me and Lee to get a game to the table but for me Lee plus one of the kids is not always as easy or no for the kids is is much harder yet so this is one that looks amazing and I'm looking forward to playing it. I've heard great things. And then I have Reworld. My friend Lyle called me one day and says, hey, I'm putting in an order and these, this game is five bucks. Um, do you want one? I was like, yeah, for five bucks. So I bought this copy and it was on sale online. I think it was Board Game Bliss and they were selling it for five dollars. I don't know why because this is an amazing game. Me and Lee played it and it's super neat. So the first portion is you're going to be playing kind of, you have like, so you're going to be creating a new world. So you're the re-world and then you'll have like the, the new New York or the new, like all these different cities that the, the new Las Vegas, cause I don't know, they can't come up with new names, I guess. But first part you're going to do is you get cards that you're going to be spending to collect these different pods from the main board and put them onto your ship. This is a ship that's going to travel across the space to go create the new world when you when you collect. So you kind of do all this thing to kind of add the ships. But depending on the cards you have, the combinations you have, the final number that you play indicates where you have to add that pod. And you're trying to make the pod so that they don't get stuck, that they come in certain orders. So because some will kind of trigger the scores. Some will travel to the new world on their own from when you arrive there, but some needs to be carried down. So you need to have some carry pods that will connect to other things, but then you got to make sure that they're available and um, open when it's time to use them. So really neat. And then afterwards you take them from your ship and then you carry them and go and create the new world. Um, and then as you unlock different things, you'll collect points for that. It's really cool. I really, really enjoy this one. We've played it a, a few times, a handful of times. And each time it's just such an interesting, um, puzzly game. So because you've got to be careful on how you collect the pods and you've got to be careful on how you unload the pods and then try to score as high as you can. So, reworld. Okay. Oh, the end is near. So then I have... Dominion. So when I first got into the hobby, my brother had brought Dominion and I had played it and then I was excited so I decided to buy Dominion as well. But I was like, well, he has Dominion so I should get a different one. So I bought Dominion Intrigue. Not realizing Dominion Intrigue was not a standalone game. So then I had a game I couldn't play. Now my brother had lent me Dominion at the time so I could play it at first but then he ended up having extra sets of the base cards so he gave those to me. So for years and years and years, I had Dominion Intrigue. And then a friend of mine was selling Dominion, so I decided might as well get the base. And then I have two of them. Um, and that's all I have, only those two. Because each game comes with multiple cards that you can play with. And you're going to play with all of them. You can do different combinations each time. So the more different boxes you have, the more you can change up your comb um, the combinations that you can do. I can actually use an app that will kind of randomly select a combination. Um, so, I mean, there's plenty of combination that you can do in the base game that you can just play with just the base game. Um, but, you know, if you're interested in getting more, and then because this one was secondhand, um, cheap, and then from a friend that was close by, then I decided to get it. So then I have two versions of Dominion that I can do more combinations with. Then I have Viking Warriors of the North. I haven't played this one yet. This is a stunning box. Like the artwork looks 
amazing. It plays three to four players, and I think that's why we haven't played it because of the three player thing. But you get the map that has different water things, and you kind of, is it a dice that you roll? Might be a dice that you roll, but like, or cards that you draw that will have a certain symbol that'll indicate whether you'll go north, south, east, or west. And you're moving your ship around, and you're trying to kidnap the Jarls the, of other village, their daughters. You're trying to kidnap their daughters, um, from what I understand. And um, like I said, I haven't played this one. I kind of had a quick glance at a tutorial once. Um, it's not getting amazing reviews, but a lot of times that doesn't really... I've, I've, I've played games with bad reviews that I personally have loved. So don't know a lot about it. I um, at one point, you're not going to be good to go, and you're going to have to uh, trigger the haunt. And then depending on which room that happened with, with which omen card, it'll activate one of the 50 potential uh, scenarios. And then it, anything can happen. could be that the person becomes a vampire, or a bunch of different type of scenarios can happen, and then you kind of separate for a moment and read the instructions to kind of see what your new winning criteria is. So you'll have your winning criteria, the, the one that becomes the, the trader have their own winning criteria, and you don't necessarily know what those are going to be. Um, but each comes with like a little miniature, an L painted miniatures that comes that way. Um, you have, now I bought an updated, cause you had the ones where they would have sliding things and they kept falling off. So I bought these ones that have these little dials instead. So that works a little bit better. Um, and yeah, you have all these different characters that you can play as. Um, and then each one will have a different speed, a different sanity level, a different intellectual level. And depending on what comes across, what you need to do, it's such a fun, neat game. I was blown away by it. And then I thought it was my brother that had gotten to me. I was like, so I gave him a call right away. I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for this game. It was amazing. And not only was it amazing, but the kids could actually play it. So I was so excited for this one. And then turned out it wasn't my brother that had gotten it. So I'm like, oh my God, well, who what was it? And then it was my sister-in-law at the time that had gifted that to me. And then she had found it on it was great. It was so good. I was so excited with this one. We've played it tons of time. Um, I got some updated dice with them that has like, you know what? Oh, do I want to have? Because they're only one, two, or three or nothing, right? So I guess I don't want to mix them up with normal dice. Um, lots of like little tokens that comes with it depending on what happened, what gets triggered. Um, it's an amazing game. I am liking this one quite a bit. So that is Betrayal of House on the Hill. Um, does it look like this? Yes, it does. So we got this one over here now. Oh my gosh. Okay. And there's only one final game in here. So let me go and reach that for us here. And this is Duel of Ages. So it's another civilization type game, possibly. Um, I've never played it. It has these odd shaped pieces that you build up and build this board. So it kind of does have that civilization look. And then you have the different cards that you can activate. Now there's Duel of Ages 2. There's multiple ones. This is the first one. I bought this from Lyle. Oh wow, it says from 2 to 16 players. What? That's a big group. Gameplay is one to five hours selected by players. So is it like you set up a set time? I know very little about this. I just, looking at it, the whole thing of it, looked like something that I would really enjoy. Um, so I'm excited to give it a try. Not everybody's gonna spend five hours playing a game with me, so I don't know how that's gonna work out. Um, but it sounds like you might kind of set a time of what you're going to play. So I really do need to look. This is an older game as well. I don't know when it was published. 2002. So it is an older game. Um, but that's one thing that's neat when you get into a new hobby at the stage that I have. There's all the older games are all brand new to me as well. So um, 
and there a lot of them are really amazing it's just like oh well you know it's it's dated it hasn't aged well it's like it's just you see those kind of mechanism in different games that kind of use it differently but I'm excited to try this some it says team up gear up fire up so no idea how this plays I'm excited to try oh and that was the last one in this box so be sure to tune in tomorrow to see what's in box number 22 bye everybody